Blessing Soul Family, welcome to a new You Makeover podcast, Upgrading Human Potential. I am Amy, and I invite you to join in the anti-aging revolution. Let us connect to our home frequency as we expand our consciousness and become limitless. Let's put our hands on our heart for a moment. Take a deep breath. We ask to resonate in the frequency of eternity as we create our new earth reality. Thank you. I love you. It is done. Now let's start living our highest potential. So I'm so excited to introduce Sarah Balmer here today with us. And I'll tell you a little bit about Sarah and then we will get started with our conversation. Um, Sarah is actually a fellow DECU uh, practitioner with me, and I was actually really excited. I'll just share this. She was my first partner that I got to work with, and we just, what a great way to start that training. So let me just tell you a little bit about Sarah Balmer. Sarah Balmer is a light worker. She's an energy healer and a creative who's passionate about helping others lead a more awakened life and to learn how to embody their authentic light and hold a higher vibration. I mean, essentially that's what a light worker is. So she's here to help people learn about what it is to be a light worker. Through intuitive design jewelry and her Anchor the Light monthly box, she has classes, one-on-one -on -one sessions. Sarah imparts a deeper understanding of the human biofield, helps to reprogram unconscious patterns and empowers others to align with their truth becoming even more authentic, liberated, and expanded. She holds certifications in DECU, holistic health coaching, transformational life coaching, behavior, challenge, behavior change coaching, crystal healing, which is a big thing that we'll talk about today, teaching yoga, personal training, Reiki, past life regression, Akashic records, EFT, and TFT tapping, aromatherapy, and design. She's received continuing education in shamanism, the Tao Te Ching, the Bhagavad Bhagita, chakra healing, energy medicine, cacao ceremonies, vibrational sound healing, mediumship, quantum healing, and self-mastery. Awesome. So much depth to Sarah. So I just want to start out because I know you do aura readings and I have a question about aura readings. Um, what is an aura reading and actually what is the aura? So if you could just touch in on that real quick to get us going. Yeah, well, thank you. And thank you for having me on. I'm super excited to be here and to be chatting with you. Um, so just a little bit about auras. So the aura is our energetic body. It's often called the subtle body and it's really the invisible aspect of our body that a lot of people are really not even aware of, but we have these energy centers that align down the center of the body called the chakras. And then there are kind of these invisible layers to our energy body. And we all intuitively know this when we interact with others because we immediately pick up the vibrations of their heart field and the energies that that they're resonating in and I always give the example like if you go in a room where you know people are super down or super sad like let's say a funeral home for example you know when there's a certain kind of mood and vibration you automatically kind of calibrate to that vibration and start to adjust into kind of mirroring the other people in the room that is picking up on the energy of others in a very you know i guess natural example and so our aura is that energy body that's always exchanging information on an energetic level with the world around us and then in an aura reading, so, you know, there are a lot of practitioners that do aura reading, so I can only really speak to what it is that I do. And so I tune in with the person that I'm reading and I just, actually, there's a few different ways that we read it. I usually start by reading sort of what is current um, in their energy field. So looking at areas where they're deficient or excessive, areas where they might be blocked. And I'm tuning in to those different aspects of the body. For me, when it comes to intuitive work, my soul language is color. You know, being a creative, like I love color. I feel like I 
live in a world of color. I sense color vibrationally. And, um, and so that's, you know, when it comes to like mediumship and intuitive work, I naturally just kind of landed in this realm of working with auras because it's color, you know, it's, it's energy that's, um, that's transmitted through color in terms of its vibration. So it's, it's been a kind of a near, a very natural flow for me, but I'm tuning into the person's, you know, energetic anatomy and then pulling in what those colors are. And the, the colors can, you know, they can have depth to them. They can have texture. They can have movement. They can be positioned, you know, a certain way on the body or in the field, and they can vary in all the different shades. So green can take on a lot of different shades of green. They can be tainted with white or dark, um, or I guess white or black, but you know what I mean, like different shades. And so it's, it's interpreting, you know, the colors that I'm getting, it's interpreting those back into a reading to share with the person like greater insights about their energy field. In many cases, it affirms what people know, but in, in some cases, it also expands, you know, how they're viewing certain situations in their life or ways that they may be, I feel like it's just greater insights that, that kind of expand awareness around different aspects. And then sometimes we'll look at dominant colors or weaker colors. And I really love looking at patterns. So how, you know, do things kind of fire and wire in your energy field? And so, you know, the colors will flow in like, um, you know, like maybe orange and then yellow purple or, you know, whatever that flow is. And then it's kind of reading for that person. What is that pattern that's coming forward in their life? It's like a default pattern that they always do. Like maybe they, you know, feel something and then they immediately second guess and doubt it. So they go up into their brain and start overanalyzing it. Like that would be kind of an example of, you know, that, that orange or yellow moving up into purple. So it's, it's mm. you know, kind of pulling in those colors and starting to read those patterns and how those things play out in their ordinary life. And just bringing so much more, I think, illumination to those things can really help people start to see from a different perspective and start to work on things from a different perspective as well. That, that was such a beautiful description, so in depth. I mean, I don't think I've ever heard it described that way. So thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, I definitely, I'm totally color oriented as well. I'm really curious, do you see color or like, how do you experience intuitively color? Is it with your actual eyes? Like share with us about That's what your super pair powers are doing through <laughs> yeah. you. <laughs> That's a really great question. So I generally don't see them with my human eyes. Um, now I have like in different workshops and things, classes that I've done, you know, where we're in that setting I have, and I have to say, it wasn't that mind blowing. <laughs> like when I actually saw them with my human eyes, it wasn't that it, it, maybe it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was just kind of this glow of like color, you know, but generally it's more of a, um, like clear feeling and clear knowing that it comes in through my third eye. And so when I kind of sit in meditation, I will see the colors absolutely with my third eye. Um, but a lot of times it comes in immediately in like clear knowing, like I just get the word or get the color almost immediately. And then, you know, that vision will come forward in my third eye. That's awesome. So what you're speaking to is like the clear cognizance, the clear knowing, yes. and then also the clear, you said you feel it. So clear sentience, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's really, that's really incredible. I think that that's kind of one of those things that, um, you know, you kind of wonder what is a light worker? Some people may be wondering what a light worker is. Not everybody has an idea of what that means. Um, and I know for me, it's like a feeling, it's a feeling that, you know, wow, I want to do these things. And, and most of them are, are kind of like actions and oriented with being light, you know, and being this higher frequency. And we'll talk about that too, because you have a really special offering called my harmonic. And I want to hear about that in a minute. Um, but I wanted to speak to what you're talking about and what's happening with the shifting on the planet right now. I am so excited about this because I feel like those of us, whether we've been on this journey for a really long time, just awakened to the fact that we're not just our body. We have an energy body. I mean, this is, this is a huge piece, like recognizing, especially in the Western world, we don't, we're not, you know, we're, we're kind of like a, um, you know, we're 
we're a physical chemical being and that's kind of how like our medical system will view us as but in the eastern part of the world um like in Asia and that sort of thing where yoga is practiced as a regular thing. I mean, children are meditating in, in preschool mm -hmm. over there, you know, mm -hmm. and then you have the Chinese medicine with the um, meridians in the body. Mm -hmm. So I really love that this transformation is actually happening, especially in um, America, in the Northern <laughs> hemisphere, because this, um, I feel like we've been missing that, but it's time now with all of the shift that's happening on this planet right now for everybody to start awakening to what is it? You know, we talk about this awakening. It's like, we're awakening to understand ourselves in a truer way, right? Mm -hmm. Like, who are we really? What are we really? And the superpower part comes in is like, what are we capable of? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no surprise to me that superheroes has been a big fascination for a lot of people, right? Because these are actually amazing skills that help us create what it is that we get to experience in our lives. So mm -hmm. I love that you spoke to that and you shared how you experience it because I find that for me, that's how it's helped me not feel so weird, you know, kind of woo woo and, and putting myself in these judgmental boxed categories versus recognizing like, oh, it's like totally okay to be who I am. And it's actually really fantastic and fun and amazing, right? It's like, it makes life more <laughs> vibrant, like literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you share with us? Um, I know you have a lot of offerings that you do, but you have a couple that are really highlighted right now. I want to talk about your monthly box because that is so cool. I mean, everybody's doing the monthly box in some way, right? You can get, you know, environmental products, you can get cleaning products, you can get, um, you know, even just snacks from other countries you know there's all these different things but you were telling me about my monthly box and so i want you to share what that is because the thing that i love about it is we are all about the new earth energy creating mm -hmm. new earth structures and this to me is such a perfect cyclical offering and so i wanted to definitely highlight that so share that part that oh, offering that. that you're doing yeah thanks for asking um, so the monthly box is called Anchor the Light, and I have to start by just saying I feel like that is my sole mission. So just, you know, why I'm here on earth and what I came here to do is really to just anchor the light and to help others really embody what that means. And so you were talking a moment ago about just being this kind of human chemical you know, being very much just body oriented here in the West. And it's, it's interesting because I think there's like this emergence of, of, you know, mind body and this connection between mind body. And we're seeing more, I'm kind of going on a tangent here in a little bit, but it, it's winding back around. But the, um, you know, I feel like we're seeing this emergence of even hospital systems recognizing the mind body connection. And, you know, more and more people are waking up to this mind body connection. But I feel like there's also this light body connection that's kind of people are slowly awakening to and, and starting to expand into. And I feel like that's really kind of what this monthly box starts to tip towards is there's an element of kind of mind body with the affirmation work we do, but then there's this element of light body and, you know, activating people on an energetic level and at their purest, you know, element of just light, you know, being a light being. And so, and so that's really it kind of, I guess, you know, some of the, um, my thoughts behind it in terms of what's going into it, but there are four main components of the box. And so the first one is a monthly affirmation and it's basically just a statement that really empowers someone to, to really kind of reprogram their thoughts. And there's a, there's a small teaching that goes along with it. And then there are journal prompts to help them kind of unpack what are their limiting beliefs around these things. And so I'll just give you an example of one of the affirmations that I have coming up and it's um, abundance flows to me freely and easily. And then I love that. <laughs> yeah, I love that too. <laughs> um, and so and so there are journal prompts that go into that. So each month you get this beautiful practice of kind of sitting down and having that kind of sacred space and, and quiet time of, you know, writing out, like, what does that mean for you? And following the different prompts to kind of dissect your own belief patterns around those things. And then the card has, you know, features beautiful art that is high frequency in and of itself. And I actually have a new thing that I've started to do because 
I, I love the art and feel like it's so encoded with frequency itself that I've started turning them into screensavers and putting them on my phone and they don't even have the, the affirmation or the words on them, but I just look at it throughout the day and I'm immediately brought back into that frequency. And that's something that I haven't actually started sharing with the subscribers, but I'm going to start this coming month. It's just something that I started doing in my own personal practice. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, cause the art holds, you know, the frequency too. And so that's the Absolutely. affirmation card. There's another card included in the box that's a kindness card. And so it's just a thoughtful sentiment that's meant to be given away. And so, and I also say if any of the other elements of the box don't resonate with you for some reason, give them away too. So there's a huge, there's a huge component of this mission that's all about giving because when we give from our heart, we actually receive so much more back and we're cultivating gratitude because when we give to someone when they didn't ask for it, but just because we're simply thinking about them and want to do something nice for them, it means that we've thought about them. It means that we've gone, you know, out of our way to show like kindness and consideration. And so the only response back is gratitude, right? When, from the other person. I mean, when someone gets something out of the blue like that, that's so thoughtful, um, their response is just always, you know, overflowing with, with gratitude. And so that's really, you know, one of the elements is cultivating more gratitude on the planet by just fueling this action of giving. And then the third component is a bracelet. And so they're all handmade bracelets. They're, um, you know, utilizing different gemstones and crystal energy that support the affirmation work for the month. And you can even store an intention or your affirmation in the bracelet. So as you wear the bracelet throughout the day, it's like a reminder cue, you know, to come back to your affirmation or, um, or to just remember, you know, whatever it is that you've stored in it. And so it's a beautiful way to work with the frequencies of the affirmation and just what it is you're wanting to anchor in. And then the last piece is a crystal. And so each month you get a different crystal you're working with. It also is supporting the work of the affirmation on an energetic level. And the crystal, it's usually, you know, smaller in size, so it can go in your pocket or you could place it on your nightstand or use it in your meditations. But it's just another form of working with crystal energy for the month. Oh, I love it so much. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, when I, when I was you had described it to me before and I just can feel it's like this entire time, total God bumps just vibrating mm -hmm. through me the entire time yeah. because it's literally, it is, it's like anchoring that light. It's like lighting up the light that's in my body and my system and my aura. And it's just this big, yes, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we, we play a lot with the energy of yes. And what's next, you know, just following the golden breadcrumbs into mm -hmm. this new earth reality and we're all going there. It doesn't really matter where we are in our ascension process. And mm -hmm. what I love about what you're offering is you're bringing in something that's really key, which is this natural element that the earth has in an abundance to offer us. And mm -hmm. in everything that you're doing, it's this giving and receiving. I mean, it's like a transmission, you know, there it's this beautiful cycle that doesn't have any kind of that stigma that, oh, it's better to give than receive, for example, you know, but the thing that I love about that is it even flips that statement on its head because you know how you feel when you give something, mm -hmm. but in return, you are receiving. And I believe very strongly. And I know for myself that abundance is really about that, you mm -hmm. know, and in no matter what, no matter what it is that you have an abundance of, and that's mm -hmm. what the new earth is about. The new earth is about really tapping into the abundance in mm -hmm. all areas of our life. Um, and so the pieces of the crystal, I love that support. I love the, of the art that I totally agree with, you know, because this is where we're stepping into, we're stepping into frequency. Mm -hmm. We are eventually going to return to this place of, believe it or not, telepathy. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? There's just less words and mm -hmm. words have been really beautiful. Um, I play with words a ton in what I do, but what I found is, is where we're going, a lot of the words don't even have the ability to hold the frequency for that. Mm -hmm. And so to have that beautiful image and I have, I mean, it's very mandala like the stuff that you paint and it's painting, right? You're using painting with that. It's both. Um, sometimes I paint them and then sometimes I'm doing, doing it all digitally. So it's, it's fun, the layering and things you can do digitally and, and you can make things transparent so that it really starts to take on, I feel like expanded 
frequency right. in many ways. Mm -hmm. And I love digital art too, because I feel like what it's doing is like, have you ever heard or felt like, I wish I could just take what I'm seeing in my head and uh -huh. like put it down on the paper. And I feel like digital art does a lot. I mean, I'm an artist as well. And mm -hmm. I, you know, that can take time and we're moving into this space of, we have a choice how much time we spend on certain things and stuff. And it can be really fun to be in that creative process, however it comes through. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to talk a little more about um, kind of where you, how you got to where you are. Um, I know we've, you, we've talked about yoga even between us because I'm a yoga teacher as well. And what, what was interesting is when I started my asana, which is the physical practice of yoga that is very highlighted in our Western world, I didn't realize actually it was when I started my teacher training. Mm -hmm. So my asana practice where I went frequently came because I had a total breakdown in my mm -hmm. life. And I just was like, you know what? I need to do something for myself. And it was the thing that I did for myself. I mm -hmm. went to go be with myself for an hour and be in my spiritual work and my body work all in the same place. Then mm -hmm. when I took the teacher training, I realized that I was actually practicing yoga for many years before that, because mm -hmm. there's other parts of it, right? There's other mm -hmm. limbs of yoga, like the meditation and, mm -hmm. you know, connecting to the energy and the breath work and all that good stuff. So I'd love for you to talk about how yoga and crystals and, and, you know, everything that you've been talking about, how it kind of comes together with what it is that you do. Yeah. It's been such a long journey. And I, I feel like with all of us, like we arrive where we are by our path, right? Just all the things we've experienced. And um, I've been on, I feel like a spiritual journey for a really long time. And what's funny is I've actually worked with crystals for a really long time. I just haven't always been, um, awakened to their energy like I am now. And it's funny because I think that crystals have a way of really promoting the awakening process or igniting the awakening process because they're activating energy and they're activating so many things on a light level for people. And <clears throat> I actually started working with crystals over 20 years ago. And it was like, I knew that there was, you know, something very special about them. And but I, I wasn't, and I would, you know, read about the metaphysical properties, but I wasn't totally awakened to it on an energetic level. And I feel like the yoga practice really developed so much more attunement between body, mind, soul, um, and as well as the energy body. And then um, I've, I've gone to, on pilgrimages some to really beautiful places like India and Peru and Sedona, places where, you know, there are just really sacred lands that are so rich with spiritual energy and just really high frequency. And I feel like that those trips really also play a really big role in my journey in terms of just, you know, how I've expanded and grown and developed and just the catalyst that those trips have been for different things in my life. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a long and winding path, but, um, but, you know, the yoga piece is huge in terms of just it being ever unfolding, like what you were saying with the asana part. And so many of us go into it, I think so many Westerners go into it for a form of exercise and form, for this form of like low impact movement that, you know, feels uh, approachable, you know, but then when we get into it, we realize there's so much more. And I think when you go through teacher training too, you really start to appreciate the philosophy behind it. And um, just the depth and the richness. And even still, like I've been on my yoga journey for so many years and even still, I am just going down all these new rabbit holes of, you know, learning different aspects and different things. And, um, it's, it, the more I learn, the more I practice, the more I see that yoga really permeates everything. And my yoga really is a living, breathing practice that happens like 24 hours a day. Right. It's like you're yeah. living it, right? You're living yeah. your yogic path. You know, I can feel like um, I can feel Yogananda's with us right now. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just smiling and nodding. Uh, so cute. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Yogananda, for those of you who don't know, brought yoga to um, the Western world. And he was very instrumental. And he wasn't the only one, but he was one that was very instrumental in bringing this beautiful energy to this part of the world, which is, I always have felt like before I even practiced the asana part, you know, when I was on my spiritual path, I, I really honored yoga because I, I knew that what it did was it was bridging 
people, it was doing what yoga means. Yoga means to yoke, right? To bring together, to join. And so it was bringing that and bridging um, this physical reality to the energetic reality, essentially. I mean, to me, energy and spirit is really no different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just what are the words that we're using? And mm-hmm. so I love that that incorporated with, because even crystals, I feel like they do, they have this really powerful energy mm-hmm. and awakening to that versus like just being unconscious, you know, because so many of us are drawn to gemstones and beautiful crystals. And a lot of times we're like, I don't know why I just have to have this or, (laughs) you know, and then you start finding out the metaphysical properties of it and it makes it even that much more, oh, wow. Okay. Like it's those things that you were talking about earlier with your readings. It's like people then kind of confirm things that they, they already knew, you know, cause we're just not taught this stuff. This is not mm-hmm. something that has been taught in our social conditioning. That's, that's around the world, I'm sure, but definitely in our culture, I can really only speak to our culture because mm-hmm. in this yeah. life, I've only been here. <laughs> mm-hmm. However, um, I think it's just a beautiful thing that, that you, you put the crystal and the, in the bracelet in the box and everything that you're offering is meant to be given away if you feel like it's meant to be given away and not given away to like lose something, but given away to share Mm -hmm. and actually grow something. So I think that's amazing. Um, Clearly you're very intuitive. Mm -hmm. And so all of the things that you do, I mean, you do, you do things like Akashic record readings. Um, Now you've been doing Deku. I've definitely experienced your magic Mm -hmm. in that. Um, It really is about returning us to ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Like having to get our, know ourselves on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'd love for you to share a little bit about my harmonic, because I know it's something you're really passionate about. And I love all that you pour into that. It's almost like, I feel like it's this, um, I mean, the the monthly box is definitely something amazing and often awesome as far as it being a um, extension Hold on a second. Sorry. <laughs> An alarm going off. As far as it being an extension of um, what it is that you you do, who you are, and what it is that you're here to offer and share. It's like your purpose-driven work. I love it. <laughs> and so my harmonic is actually a very um, specifically focused thing. So I'd love for you to just share what that is yeah. and what you what you put into it for sure. Yeah. So I have to kind of share where it originated to start just because there's just so much magic starting all the way, you know, back to the inception of the idea. And um, so I've started to work more with the Akashic Records, even in terms of my creative work. And I've gotten really into reading the Akashic Records of different crystals, which I love because you can kind Mm -hmm. of go into the expansiveness of the crystals field and really just pull in you know, anything, like you never know where it's going to go. And so it was in this Akashic Records reading of the stone Indigo Gabbro um, that I got all of this information. That's what it looks like there. (laughs) Uh, And so it's such an amazing stone. And it was kind of this whole download that came in about how to really work with frequency on a totally new and different level. And so it's combining vibrational sound frequency to start and then crystal energy and frequency and then plant medicine or plant um, vibration through essential oils. And it's connecting to an individual to tap into what is their home frequency. You know, what, it, how, do, how, do, how can we leverage their home frequency to help awaken greater parts of, the, of them so that they can continue to be activated and expanded in returning to greater wholeness? And so my harmonic is a tool for awakening and it, it's a sacred serum. So it comes in like a roller ball, like what you would, you know, think of as a essential oil roller ball, but it, it's actually created in sacred ceremony. And so I always make sure that I as a practitioner and am in a really high frequency state before I even go into it. Like I've had orders for some of these that I've put off for a day or two because I just wasn't, you know, in the right place as a practitioner. And so I feel like that I, as a channel am 
coming to this work, you know, as a true and authentic and high vibrational being of light that's there to, to create the offering. Um, and then we open up sacred space and I call in sound, vibrational sound. So that could be different for any individual. It can be a gong, it could be a singing bowl, it could be a tuning fork, it could be a drum or a rattle, or it could even be voice, it could be mantra. Um, and so there's any, I'm getting like goosebumps talking about it. It could be <laughs> any type of sound, but the sound is what's encoding everything. So it's vibrational yeah. sound that starts the frequency. And then the crystals kind of come forward. So I have this little crystal lab um, full of all these beautiful, it's, I know it's just as great as you can imagine. It's like all these beautiful colors of little bitty crystals. And the crystals are coming forward for that person. And so it might be, you know, a couple crystals, it might be 10 different crystals. And so there's small little like kind of like chip stones that could fit into an oil bottle. And so then those are all kind of coming forward and the sound is encoding into the crystal. So there's the sound is being directed into those and they're storing the frequency of the sound. And then together, the crystals, the wisdom of the crystals is really driving the decision about what oils create the appropriate environment for all of that to, you know, blend together into. And so the oils then come forward and it can be, you know, one or two oils or it can be multiple oils. And I also have a lot of different oil blends from companies like Revive and doTERRA and Young Living that, that kind of contain their own magic already that are, you know, unique blends. And all of that gets then blended together and then the sound goes back into it one more time. Um, and then it's blessed, you know, with Reiki energy. And so it's just a beautiful process. And then it, uh, there are sacred messages that usually flow in, in the process. And it's always magical as a practitioner to see what's coming together and what's coming forward. I've experienced like some big goddess Shakti energy that's just been so passionate and sensual and amazing. And then I've experienced some like what I feel like is like rising sun energy, you know, just beautiful glowing, rising in vibration, very energizing sun energy um, frequencies. And so there's a, a write up that goes along with it where everything's written up. So the oils that are used, the crystals, there's a mantra that um, will be created for the oil and that's included in the write up. And then any sacred messages are also written up as well um, in that report. So it's usually like a three plus page, you know, report that you get with your harmonic. And so it's just, it's just beautiful. And it's so like, I feel so honored to do this work and to even, one to even, I guess, get the download, you know, to do it and then to actually execute on all of it and then just start to, you know, hold the container for it. Um, it's just, a, it's just all a beautiful process. And I just feel humbled and honored to even like witness it and, and bring it forward. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. It, I mean, I had no idea the depth of what it went into it and the care mm -hmm. and the sacredness. I mean, it's like every, I love too how you brought up that sometimes you wait to do it because that's our true modeling of honoring yourself because mm -hmm. this is what I love about this period of time that we're in mm -hmm. with this, you know, shut down, lockdown, quarantine, maybe going back into another one, that kind of thing. <laughs> is that we get the permission to get off the hamster wheel. Mm. And part of that hamster wheel energy is I have to work even though I'm sick. I have to work, you know, regardless. It's all mm -hmm. about kind of just this pounding the grindstone because that's just what we've been doing mm -hmm. for so long. And to spend time with even your spiritual connection, a lot of times people in the past would just save it for the one day of the week that you go to church, you know? But yeah. what I love about this is, is it weaves into your daily life the not only permission, but the reminder that you're a spiritual being and you have an opportunity to tap into the greatness of what that actually means. Mm -hmm. And I love this, what you're utilizing these natural elements to support that because that's also what we're returning to. We're returning to remembering, putting ourselves back together in the wholeness. And what is that wholeness combined with is nature. 
You know, it's mm -hmm. like, we're our extensions of mother earth are these bodies that we get to travel. I call them spaceships. You know, we get to travel <laughs> around in space in these beautiful vehicles and it's time to start really caring for them and nurturing them and honoring them in all that, that they do for us and giving mm -hmm. us the opportunity to have these experiences as humans. Mm -hmm. So that is so amazing. I, I'm so grateful that you're doing this because I know there's a lot of us. I mean, I'm like, I'm going, hmm, I think I need to be ordering one of those from, <laughs> from you, Sarah, because for me, I mean, I've been on a spiritual journey for a long time and there was a point at which it, I just felt like I was getting beat up even by my gifts, you know, mm -hmm. and by my intuitive ability to feel everything and, and energy and, and intuit that kind of stuff. But now it's, ever since I was introduced to your home frequency and I was introduced in a way that was like just kind of whereabouts it might be in a vibrational level, but not at this depth le in depth level that you're describing. And I just know from utilizing these kinds of things that you can really amplify your ascension process and actually nurture it and be in a space of grace and love instead of struggle and getting beat up by mm -hmm. what's actually shifting you into being the greater that you are. And mm -hmm. what has to happen is we have to let go of all that's not serving us. And sometimes what we're gripping onto, we don't realize isn't serving us. You know, mm -hmm. it's just kind of the old way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So Oh, Sarah, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Um, now your, your uh, website, tell everybody where they can get in touch with you because you have a lot of beautiful offerings, like your intuitive jewelry. It's like everything you do, you pour your beautiful body and soul into. Mm -hmm. So share where everybody can get in touch with you. Yeah. Um, you can find me online at sarahbellstyle.com. And I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at Sarah Bell Style. Okay. So that's S-A-R-A-H and then bell is B-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, and then style is style. Great. And you have a Facebook group too that you run as well. So I do. yeah, it's called Anchor the Light. Um, back to my, my mission again. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful Facebook group. There's a lot of crystal lovers in there, but it's just a really uh, uplifting, beautiful community to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for sharing yourself and everything that you offer and for doing what you do as a light worker in this world. We're all mm -hmm. so grateful for that. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's been a pleasure. So are you ready to create the new you? Are you ready to transcend beauty and reprogram what it means to age? We invite you to learn more about how you can start resonating in the frequencies of eternal youth and join the anti-aging revolution. Visit eternalgoldbeauty.com and find out how you can become the new you. Thanks for joining us today, everybody. Bye. Namaste.